Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Mustjik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. Today we're continuing on with line. I was going to go to shape because uh, that's what I was sort of had in mind until I saw this. A friend of mine posted it on Facebook. She had been to the Museum of Anthropology in Mexico and came across a room that had textiles and in particular rugs and they were just marvelous so she thought she'd take some pictures and posted this image on uh, Facebook. Now I was very intrigued with this and I thought well we can use it for shape but if you look closely there's an awful lot of line in here is so intriguing so I thought I'd try this kind of thing. So we're going to work today with this kind of patterning and uh, design work, but in our own way, of course. I'm not sure this actually has a story. It's possible, so we don't want to go there. It's like Chinese writing. You might say something you shouldn't be saying. <laughs> anyway, um, I have an example that I've been uh, laboring over. Uh, this does take quite a bit of time. And I had trouble cutting things. I had all sorts of scissors, and uh, but I found that my X-Acto knife really did the trick. So, but sometimes you still have to use a, a good sharp scissors to get the ends. The ends will fray a bit. I, and in some cases, I've actually used that uh, to advantage to cover an area. So give this a shot. This is just. Um, um, you know, twine that you can buy, you know, just about anywhere. And uh, I, I wouldn't recommend wool. I think you need something a little stronger and something that holds its shape better. So macrame cord, if it's small, uh, is probably good. Anything sizal is good. So anyway, here we have it. So. Um, I've got a sort of a start just to show you the process. And we're going to continue on with design uh, compositions uh, using uh, the line as a design element. And in this case, it's the cruciform. So you can do all sorts of things to get the sort of cruciform design. In a previous episode, we talked about limiting your choices so that you have a little bit more uh, influence on the work. And uh, it's less confusing and uh, the viewer will appreciate it because you've got things more in control. So we're going to start. Now the tricky part is not to get glue all over yourself because then if you're touching it, it will lift up. So. I'm going to just um, place the glue down. This is Aileen's uh, tacky glue. You could probably use Elmer's or any other glue. If you're planning on showing it, make sure it's archival. And then we're just going to place our string on that. And like I said, try not to get your fingers into it. Okay, so then to get that uh, cruciform design, we'll just put that on this side. And then you can sort of wiggle it whichever you want. Sometimes I just use the end of the brush and then uh, the idea here was to create some of these patterns uh, like here. Now they've used raised, if we're working with a gel plate, which we will be doing, um, you can't have only a raised, um, you know, a deeper surface. So if, because the ink will only go to this part, it's like a, a woodblock cut, you know, where you're taking stuff away. So this wouldn't print, but this raised area is wood. So that's what we're going to be working with. So that's why we have a string. It's all the same height. And we're going to maybe place a couple more just to give some kind of indication 
how you do this. Now you can let stuff dry um, um, or keep working whichever whichever way you want it. We can maybe do something like the stepladder idea. Um, And then you can fill in between with something like what they're doing here. All sorts of different stuff like here. Um, I've just cut little short pieces. Here I've actually taken it apart and filled it in that way. As long as it's all on the same level, it should print. No. And the fun thing about this is that you really get to practice design So you could have a whole bunch of these on the go and uh, use them as texture plates. And you can be, um, you know, as picky as you want. You know, keep the line straight or you can curve them. And to follow, you know, with the base here, our cruciform design, you might just want to curve some of them a bit. So we're going to do one more. And just bring that close to the other one. Just to make that shape really stand out. So I would probably do two or three more here and then maybe up here. Then we get the effect of the cruciform design. And then everything else is just filler. You can play to your heart's content. Um, here I have wiggled them back and forth. That's in here like that. Um, they've got an awful lot of fancy little work. Now they didn't glue it, of course, like we are. Um, they have stitches because this is a rug. So now the, I don't think I don't know if this is a hand process or a woven process. If it was woven, uh, that would be pretty tricky, but this almost looks woven. So if anybody has some information about this form, please um, give me a shout on Shoreline Studio on my Facebook because I really would like to know more about it. My friend didn't take um, many notes and we believe it's Aztec, but I'm not even sure about that. So I did lots of research, but I'm, I'm up a blind alley. So, okay, so putting that aside, we'll let that dry. And um, we're going to start on the gel plate. And we're just going to use a 5 by 7 gel plate. So we'll take a quick interlude, and then we'll be set up for doing the printing aspect. And we're back. We're set up here. I have some uh, Liquitex uh, unbleached titanium. We'll put a wee bit of that on there on our 5x7 gel plate. I always put too much paint on, so try and be more frugal here. And of course, uh, if we're dealing with Aztec things, we should have gold, don't you think? <laughs> so rolling that out. Because our background is going to be white, uh, I wanted to have a glowy color to begin with, and then on the next pass we'll try a dark. Okay, placing our plate, texture plate. And press hard. Make it 
good impression. Okay, what I'm going to do is roll it once more because the middle didn't really show up as well as we might. Okay. I might get Josh to lead on this. <laughs> we'll get Josh to really push that down. Okay. Hopefully that will do it. Yes. Oh, much better. Okay. And because we're just conditioning the plate, uh, maybe we'll run it a, a couple of times. So let's see how this looks. All right, it's really very nice. Wow. Okay. We, maybe we needed to do a little bit more on the outside edges as well. Okay. So that's nice. Okay. Um, okay, let's try that with a dark color on the paper first. And then we'll do that color on top, see how that works. Let's use some ultramarine. And of course, purple goes really well with royal things. So we'll use some violet. So we have to print the papers separately first. I'm lining up with the edge of my plexi plate. It's just an inch bigger all around than the gel plate. So it's a way of registering. I'm just making sure the edges are done. Okay, so we have a lovely violet color here with a bit of blue. Now we're just going to clean the plate a wee bit. Otherwise we'll get a neutral because um, the yellow and violet are complements, of course. And then our color might be a little more gray than we want in combination. So just the same as before. Maybe a little bit more of a, this is a titanium buff color. Touch of yellow. And lots of gold. Right. So I don't want the paint to s squish, which is probably a really bad artistic term, but I can't think of anything else. So. There must be a proper, you know, every discipline has its vocabulary, and I'm sure there's a proper term for squishing. <laughs> okay, I need Josh's help on this one. <laughs> okay, sides and middle. Sides and middle. Yep. Be middle first. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you. Oh yes, look at this. Oh wait. So we're just gonna line it up as before. Should be good. And success look at this that's really lovely so this is definitely worth doing we're gonna try one more maybe with black to maximize the impact but that's quite lovely and you see all the little details quite amazing I'm just gonna wash this quick wipe it off we don't want to obscure any of the patterns, otherwise I would just print right over, you know, put another layer of paint right over top. But just in case, on the safe side, we have black, and we'll do as before. We'll print the paper first. I, the paper I'm using today is just uh, um, cardstock. Yeah, it's cardstock. I'm always saying tag instead of cardstock, but it's cardstock. But multimedia paper would work. Uh, I'm sure even deli paper would work. Okay, pretty good. Let's put that aside. So on this layer, we're just going to add more of our titanium buff, our yellow, and our gold. Sometimes it's very effective just to keep to a simple palette and then just manipulate your backgrounds. And just make sure it's all blended nicely. And that layer needs to be not too thick. So we have a little bit too much paint on. I'm just taking it down a bit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Press it. Press <laughs> it, please. Just be careful it doesn't slip. Okay. Sides, yep, everything. Okay, thank you. Okay, looks good. And now we should be able to line it up this way as well. You can do either one. There are registration tools. Uh, you could, of course, tape the paper on the side uh, to the plate and then flip your paper back and forth. Those are all ways to register as well. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We obscure, maybe it's still a little bit too much paint, but it's not bad. I guess our 
best one is the violet one here. We'll show them uh, at the end of the video as usual. We're going to try one more little experimental thing off camera. Here's the other, the first one with the white in the background. And I'm going to take a ghost print and then we're going to try something. So, well, friends, we've come to the end as usual. <laughs> So we'll post uh, the experimental one at the end and see how it, it may be a total disaster, but we'll give it a shot. And uh, as uh, always, please like and subscribe, help our channel grow so we can bring you more content. And uh, Shaw uh, locally in the Quinell and Williams Lake area is showing it on channel 10. Uh, so that's really nice. So sometimes people stop me in the street and say, oh, I saw you on TV. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> anyway, take care of yourself. Take care of your families. Be kind to one another. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.